Shipping records can tell us a lot about people and their movements. Where they sailed from and where they arrived, what country they came from, what nationality, religion, and sometimes what racial group they belonged to. They can indicate a great deal about their circumstances, if their migration was chosen as free settlers, or if they came by force as convicts, exiles, or slaves, or in desperation as refugees from war, famine, or persecution. If you live in the United States, New Zealand, Australia, Canada, South America or many African countries, unless you are entirely descended from Indigenous First Peoples, then your ancestors most likely came from somewhere else. If they came before the 1970s, then they probably came by boat. Shipping or immigration records may survive that contain information about your ancestors' travel. The great new era of migration was mostly begun when Christopher Columbus discovered the new world of America in 1492, and Captain Cook claimed Australia for the British Empire in 1770. A race began to claim and settle the new lands between the French, Spanish and English, the three great European powers at the time. Migration to these parts of the world soon followed. Since then, almost continuously, large numbers of people have moved around the globe to make their home in a new country, often on the other side of the world. Tracing and obtaining shipping records is a vast area determined by the era and the circumstances under which your family migrated. Over the centuries, millions of people from every country on earth have boarded a vessel and made a new home for their families somewhere else. On my website, you can find links to many sources of shipping records, but it is by no means exhaustive. I've tried to organise the information in simple and logical ways to help you find websites and links for shipping records from all over the world. The American colonial period covers 300 years of shipping records, stretching from discovery leading up until the War of Independence. Links for English, Spanish and French records are grouped together. Obviously, the further back you go, the more sparse these records are. There have been millions of people over the generations who fled persecution for political, religious or economic reasons. Here you will find the Pilgrim Fathers, the Irish Diaspora and post-World War II immigrants as well as many more. Building and maintaining empires requires vast numbers of people to travel. The military and their families, bureaucrats and merchants, to travel between their home countries and the colonies. Many European countries colonised other sovereign states and countries. These links are placed under the term empire. The Industrial Revolution left many in Europe struggling to make a living. Land clearances in Scotland, England and Ireland did the same. In the 18th and 19th centuries, people were choosing to seize the opportunity of a new start. Many schemes existed to assist or even encourage families to migrate to help pioneer a new society. Gold rushes in California and Australia were the catalyst for many in the mid 19th century. There have been countless individuals who were sent to foreign shores against their will. 12.5 million Africans were sent to America and the Caribbean between 1525 and 1866 as slaves. The British sent 52,000 convicts to America and the Caribbean and about 160,000 to Australia. In this group we have also placed bond servants who whilst they chose to leave their home countries often did so out of desperation and were effectively selling their freedom for the cost of their board. The more you know about your family's history and origins, the better equipped you are to find relevant shipping records. The key is to fastidiously work back from what you definitely know, starting with you, then your parents, and keep pushing back until you find evidence of migration. 
You will often find this in vital records that state a person's birthplace, such as a marriage or death record. Place of birth will sometimes also be given in census or voter records. Once you know that you have identified an ancestor who must have travelled by sea, you can begin to narrow your search. For example, in my family, we knew that some ancestors on my mother's side came from Germany to Australia during the gold rush era in the mid 19th century. So we traced the family back until we found the relatives who had been born in Germany. Two of their children had been born in Germany and the rest were born in Australia. By these birth dates, we were able to narrow the search for shipping dates to within a few years. We could find no records for the family in Victorian shipping records, but we knew that many German immigrants came to South Australia in the mid 19th century, so I thought it was worth looking there. South Australia has excellent records and a simple, easy to use search engine. I simply put in the surname and there they were. They arrived on the Johann Caesar, which sailed from Hamburg on the 1st of January, 1855. This information allowed me to do further research into the family's origin. We learnt that they belonged to a group of over 2,000 German migrants who came from two tiny silver mining villages in the Harz Mountains called Klausthal Zellerfeld. It turned out my ancestors had lived there for 400 years. They were part of an organised mass migration. My sister and I visited the villages in Germany and through a local researcher, we were able to follow our ancestors back through many generations. So the mantra is the same. Start from what you already know and verify your information as you work carefully back. You are starting to build a picture using a range of resources, which is really good family history research practice. Shipping records can be a valuable source of information, but not the only source. Sometimes they can be full of surprising detail, such as religious affiliation, occupation, age, or even ability to read and write. Sometimes you might even find records of what they carried in their luggage. Usually it requires patience, and there may be some records that you never find. Try every variation of name spelling that you can think of that can sometimes help. There are literally hundreds of websites online that have information about shipping, passenger lists and immigration. Our list is just a start. <laughs>